Everybody? Good? Well, hey, I don't know what's on your mind, everybody. Student at GLA. Where's that? Oh, right on. Well, good to see you. Glasgow. That's right. All right, good. Well, hey, let's get going. Welcome to this live Forex trading strategy session. We'll cover technical and fundamental analysis and whatever else you want. My name is Wayne McDonald. I'm the Chief FX Market Strategist for Traders Way. Dot com, where our traders enjoy trading forex energies, metals, indices, and binary options. You may also know me from fxbootcamp.com. So today, I propose we go through absolutely everything. Um, I asked for 75 minutes. That's a long webinar. But I thought we can we can cover a little of everything, and I am also open to uh, requests and questions because I am here for you. I'm here to help. I'm not here to promote myself or sell you a product. I don't have any DVDs. I don't charge for a live trading room. I don't. Uh, I don't have anything to sell you. So I'm, you know, I'm honestly here to help and share my, you know, over 10 years of experience trading Forex. Cool. So if you ask questions, I'm happy to help. So you're the boss and I'm the humble, um, I'm the humble uh, currency trader that's willing to share. You guys willing to work under those terms? It's not bad, right? <laughs> Good. Yeah. Good. Good. All right, so uh, I'm going to just start with this one. Um, I don't know. This is just where it sort of ended up. Uh, this is crude oil, and it's been working its way up and up and up and up and up and up, hasn't it? And I really haven't been on board for the uh, the, the move up, but the the thing is, we've been working on price action. Okay, I've been working on price action with the group, um, trying to anticipate what the other traders are doing. Not necessarily what I or we want to do, but what the other market participants are doing. And um, most of these little moves have been guesses, like this. This move from this low to this high was based on what happened in this area, even though I wanted it to go down. I think ultimately our trade plan was to short, but then it failed, which predicted based on the Fibonacci retracement that it would come up to kind of this area. And, and if it did, that's where we would sell. And yeah, it came down and sure enough, fibbed again. Based on that projection, it should go up here, which it did. Is this a sell zone? No, for not for me. This was, and this was, but the third one wasn't. Um, and it's more apparent when you back out onto a higher time frame. But if it's going to the next level in which I would want it to short, the the guess, and this was several days ago that we drew these orange lines, the guess was it would work its way down, okay, give a nice little retracement, maybe come into this old uh, resistance zone, which would now act as support. And then, as you can see, the projection was to work its way up north somewhere, which it, it's dropped, and it seems to have stabilized not too far from the projection and is now starting to work its way up. It hasn't made a higher high, but it's starting to do it. And if you look at it from a higher time frame, it's pretty clear what the plan is. And this plan, as you can see, here's my new cell zone up here, um, we set this trade, you know, this basically this sell oil ear, here thing. We set that up in uh, the first or second week of January. Uh huh. Yeah, that's uh, five months ago, huh? And that's based on this move, even a higher fractal from here to here to here. How interesting, right? 
So that's why I wasn't a seller in here. But just below that and just below that, for other technical reasons, I was. Okay. Interesting, right? So you see it, it's just a 3A2, a 3A2 to 50% retracement area. And over the weeks, um, you can see the 200 EMA is finally caught up and is getting pretty close to that projection. Okay, understood? So now we're, we're setting things up, uh, in some cases, months in advance. But you need to be ready, right? The question is, uh, why those other areas for selling? Um, you can see uh, this one, which was a trade plan to sell, was based on all this resistance, right? Does that look crazy to have wanted to, to have a trade plan to sell here? Does that just look like guesswork? Does it look like a random walk? Does it look like degenerate gambling? No. And it worked. It fell for like, you know, a couple of days. But then once it moved up again, then we knew that one was dead, right? Dead. We took the shot and it worked for a few days, but for some reason it failed. Now, remember, in Cushing, Oklahoma, there was so much oil that there was nowhere else to store it. Um, we were in negotiations with Iran to nor or to a start to potentially normalize relations in, uh, with that country and allow them to sell their oil in the open market, uh, which is more adding to supply. Um, Saudi Arabia certainly wasn't cutting um, their supplies. So, you know, when we're selling at resistance, a very, very clear resistance, right? Clear, clear, clear area to sell with tons and tons of fundamentals that certainly didn't disagree. Then it it, it 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 fell. I mean, it didn't fall. I mean, it fell for a while and then rose. And all it just means is, well, that didn't work out. But was it a bad trade? I don't I don't stink so. Can anybody hear sound? The webinar is not reporting anything. Okay, good. Wonderful. Okay, good. And once again, you know, thank you for logging in today. I, honestly, I, I appreciate it. Appreciate the loyalty. A lot of you uh, recognize a lot of names going back years. So, yeah, cool. Just cool. Um, so anyways, um, that well, there's one. We're going to start off like where, you know, here's my first failure. But... Um, it you know it makes sense to me right but then this is my cautious zone right because what is the what's the definition of what i want to do with this trade sell at resistance right based on fundamentals my technical analysis says sell at resistance so where's the resistance i don't really have any So that affects my behavior. This is, you know, this is oil, but so what? It's more of a, you know, I don't know, dare I say, trader psychology thing. Um, it's just my rules of engagement, right? Remember, I can't control the market, but I certainly can control my behavior. All right. Let's go back to um, gold. I know this has got to be the ugliest chart uh, ever produced. Um, but I think you get it. Let, let's just go, sort of realign our satellites. What these lines are generally saying is this. Um, several weeks ago when we, when we were revisiting the, the short up in here, I just didn't know if it was going to fall immediately or rise and then fall. That, that's what all these other little orange lines are. But one or the other, I was thinking or wanting or all that kind of stuff. I wanted it to go down. Right? Has anyone been following this? 
like you recognize this chart that we've done? Because, you know, again, just like the oil trade that we set up in January, you know, a lot of this is a move, you know, from, you know, March. I know that's only a, a month and a half to two months ago. But, you know, it, it's familiar. It's been slow. But, you know, the big trade here is here. You can see the little gray zone. I mean, sell at the, you know, I mean, it's clear resistance, right? A little 50% retracement of the big, of the macro, which puts us down to, a, 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 let's say, a minimal t or, or conservative target of 1382. And that technically gets us down, um, not that one. It's the bigger 382. There it is. That gets us down to um, 1,083. There's a problem with that. Um, the world isn't purely technical. The world is irrational and emotional, in my humble opinion. And um, I think... A lot of people just don't want it down at 183. And that there's inherent or intrinsic value built into the, what gold is. Gold is more than gold. Gold is more than the sum of its parts. The, uh, gold represents things. It's, uh, it's useful for, you know, jewelry. It's useful for building electronics. It's useful for dentistry. Uh, it, but it's also useful to make you feel good and feel safe and feel, 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 blah, 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 blah. So, um, you know, a machine would do that, but a human would kind of buy it and hold it. So generally speaking, the closer you get to 1,000, the more we're not likely to get to 1,000. Do you guys know the event horizon? Here, here's, a, here's a star. Do, 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 right? Here's a star. And the star has lots of gravity. And there's this point here called the event horizon, right? That if you have a spaceship, do, 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 okay? Gravity is sucking you in this way, right? Toward the sun, to your, to your ultimate death. But as long as you're on the right side of this event horizon, you, you have enough thrust to say, whoa, 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 whoa. Because, it, you know, the closer you get, the faster it's pulling you toward it, right? So the speed is also increasing as you're moving left. So you don't want to crash into the sun. So when, you get, when things get a little scary, you turn on your thrusters and you can offset and you can pull yourself away from the sun, right? So you're there just to study the sun. So you're like cruising in here and you get close. And all of a sudden, whoa, 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 whoa. So you throw in your thrusters. You're like, whoa, that was close. And you, you can pull away, right? Your thrusters, your, your rocket engines or whatever you're using are strong enough to break the, the pull of gravity. But remember, it's getting stronger the closer you get. And if you get one millimeter on this side of the line, you can have full rocket blasts, right? You can have everything going this way. It's not enough. And you will crash. You will crash into the sun and die. <laughs> um, there's, you know, um, there's sort of an event horizon where, you know, really I think the the, the $1,000 level is just so unbelievably important to so many people for completely irrational, maybe not irrational, I shouldn't be so mean, but um, it's going to be defended. And the closer the closer we get to 1,000, the less likely we're going to get to 1,000. <laughs> right? We're just, the closer we get, the more, the less likely we'll get there, because in this case, the gravity is is, is pulling us away from a thousand. People will buy it just because it's eleven hundred. People will buy it just because it's eleven fifty. I mean, just that's it. No, no technical, logical, not even a fundamental reason for it, just because it's gold. 
so just be careful with this one. But long story short, um, you know, I, I, I'm not a buyer. So all these gray zones are sell zones. And it's, you know, you know it's been a long time. We've been stuck. Um, here's the support. Here's the resistance. We've been stuck here for a long time. But for the first time in a very long time, a lower high has been produced, which would suggest a touch of this, this other support that you can see, a little bounce, and a drop to the next support. Okay? And if that breaks, oy vey, you know, now we're talking down here. But that's what the big macro move had suggested anyways. I mean, this is what we've been planning on for all this time anyways. Okay? So technically, again, 11, uh, uh, 1083. 1083. Is that the Battle of Hastings? <laughs> I don't know. Um, 1083 is the price. 1066, thank you. Like 1083, uh, not bad. That's fairly close. Yeah. Not bad for a Canadian, eh? Um, so anyways, um, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, it's sort of, it's not going against our plan. Yeah, to be another way of looking at it is sort of like a hedger, right? Or a producer of something. So let's say you own a, a breakfast cereal company and the main ingredient is wheat. That's your business. You put wheat. You, you mix it with sugar, you put a funny cartoon character on the box, you put it in the grocery stores, and you sell it for 300% more than it cost you, okay? So as it drops, you buy more and more and more and more and more. Now, as currency traders and speculators, as price drops, we sell, 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 sell. But some markets be, and some market participants in certain markets – behave differently than what you and I would do. And some people will buy gold because it's falling, and they'll buy more where, you know, typically you and I should be selling if it's falling, right? So it'll get down to a certain price like 1100 uh, 1050 whatever, and people will just buy it not because it's going up, not because of the fundamentals, not because of anything except it's 1050 It's getting close to 1000 Roger that. Okay. You well, know, you know, yeah. A good comment here is it's not under leverage. Yeah, but you know, whatever. I mean, <laughs> I mean, leverage helps. But look, if somebody is buying billion dollar, billions and billions of dollars worth of gold, let's say it was a, let was, let's say it was the Bank of China divesting out of euros and into gold. Let's just say. Oh, but they're not using leverage. Hey, dude, it doesn't matter. As somebody's buying the gold, right? Somebody's buying it, and it's going to make it hard for gold prices to fall further. Yeah, so seen as cheap relative to something, right? Relative what? To future prices, relative to other asset classes, relative to inflation levels, relative to what? Well, I don't know. I think it's a poor investment. I have no problem selling it. I, I don't, you know, I don't get emotional. And, I'm, you know, maybe if I owned a, a couple of billion dollars worth of gold, I would be emotional about it too. Um, but I ain't, right? I ain't. Okay. So anyways, let's go to this one. Here's another failure to, you know, um, we actually didn't have this set up as a short. Uh, we were discussing um, this was, I think, even just yesterday. We were discussing if it were to fall, how would it fall? And, and again, we were talking about the other trader on the other side of your trade was the discussion, right? Um, which equates to a better understanding of risk in the market. It's a better understanding of price action. Okay. So if you know me, um, I'm quite actually 
bullish on this head and shoulders. And this is about, uh, I don't know, six, maybe eight weeks earlier, way over here, which isn't even the chart. We said somewhere in this week, the British pound would possibly get stronger. Can anybody confirm that? I'm pretty sure we talked about it um, here at FX Street as, as well, either, either non-part farm payrolls or another one of these events. But like literally, right, six to eight weeks earlier, we said, get ready, the middle of April, IMF report's going to come out. And if they, you know, if they don't say anything horrible, it's going to confirm what Carney's been saying. And Carney's been saying the data has been horrible, but you got to read between the lines and see that there is inflation at the wage level, which is positive. So when things get better, the pound goes up, blah, 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 blah. Easy, right? Easy. So anyways, um, and guess what? Boom. Then we had the technical head and shoulders pattern, which we set up and measured, and we took the um, – we took this, I guess I should change colors again. Let's do this one. Uh, we took this area here and this neckline, and we measured it with this. Okay, that's actually a measurement from there to there. Then we moved it to this neckline, which you can still see is a black line there, uh, or whatever. And then here, this was the projection, so we, we overlapped it with that and put this little white area on top of our gray area, and that was the target, great, which we hit, went a tiny a little higher, but came back, great, <clears throat> came back into the roll reversal, which is this area, which is nice, what used to be resistance is now support, made the new higher high, which came up, so then we grabbed this over for a buy zone, price came down, bought it, and went up, so we're actually still in the bullish, right, but we were talking about identifying the risk zones and understanding price action uh, by including what the bears would do even if you're a bull. Because just having you in mind and not thinking about other market participants will not give you consistency. Because it's more than just you, babe. Right? So that was the discussion. So as far as I'm concerned, this is just kind of moving along, it's doing its thing, very cool. Uh, if it did break down, how would it break down? And that's what, uh, so I'll just do this one here. Okay, it would kick off resistance, it would break through the previous level of support, okay, reset off of the um, 200 EMA, which is the fair market value, it would do the retest, which is now a roll reversal off of this area, Okay, it's also a fib and so on and so forth, and it would come back into the previous level of support here, blah, 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 blah. Easy, right? The nice thing about understanding someone else on the, uh, what someone else is going to do on the other side of your trade is you know their vulnerabilities, and that can work for you. Right, but you'll also know when they'll start trading. So, uh, you know, for traders that have, let's say, one or two years of trading experience, um, where they typically fail is they get caught in fib wars. So they do things like lower low, lower high, sell. Okay, so in this case, they've missed the time frame or the fundamentals, whatever. I mean, you didn't catch the IMF report. All right, not everybody's going to get that. But what will happen is some traders will start, if they're bulls, even though this was the bullish area, they buy here. Well, that's actually where a bear would sell. And this is where you, if you're trading in here, this is where it could go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And this is where a lot of traders enter the trade. It doesn't work out. They start uh, wimping out. They jam their stop. They break even and blah, blah, blah. I don't know why I'm saying blah, blah, blah a lot today. Um, but anyways, it doesn't work out. And, and you need to understand that 
you can't or shouldn't, you know, buy or sell in this area because, you know, this is where a bull would buy. This is where a bear would sell. So if bulls would buy here, then buy down there. Don't wait for nine levels of confirmation because if you bought up here, that's where a bear would sell. Now, in this case, it did go up. It's still a bad trade, right? You still bought at resistance. Uh, do I consider uh, the elect, uh, uh, elections and GDP or, or, or for the British pound? Um, okay, that's a fiscal thing, which is fine. Uh, I think it could create short-term volatility. But um, I believe most uh, governments around the world um, are impotent and uh, have very little direct effect on a currency because they can't get anything done anyways. And right now we live in a world of central banks. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. But in normal, in, in, let's say normal global economies where central banks are not manipulating everything, then a, a, a change in government could be a change in government policy, which be, could be a change in government spending, which could impact the value of a currency more than in our world where we live in now. So, yeah, maybe short-term volatility over the course of hours or days, but as far as changing the trend, no. Okay? And then uh, I'll just back out so you can see the, uh, the chart from a bigger point of view. So we're, we're actually playing this is what's going on. Just to put everything in context. Remember, everything's context. So up here, and this could be at least a short-term drop, right? You see the trend? So if, if it's going to drop all the way down, then how about more of a, like a head and shoulders type thing? That would, on a four-hour, that means uh, Monday, Tuesday, maybe? Right. Well, so, right. So, uh, I don't know if it's Morgan, Adam, or Adam Morgan, but, um, you know, it's one of these things where a lot of people say, so the trend is up. Well, the trend has been up, Right. So getting this would be relatively impossible, um, but an up and a down is easy, right? An up and a down was easy. An up and a down was easy. An up, you know, ne well, because we're closer to resistance based on trend lines, some of these psychological levels, which you would assume a bear would sell at 181 if they see this as resistance, um, you know, well, okay, fine. A bull would still look for a Fibonacci retracement of this low to this high to this low. So this would still be their buy zone. But if, they're, if, if they also see this trend line and you were in from down here or down here, uh, you would probably start to take profit if you were worried about it. And that's where the bears get in and drive it down. So the biggest clue that I'm looking for here is this. Let's say this is the distance. Okay, let's pretend that's a candle on a higher time frame. What would you do, Elf? Let me change colors. Um, how am I going to draw this? Um, I guess it would actually still be the same color. What if, um, what if uh, Monday's candle closes like this? I would probably still buy it, though. <clears throat> Excuse me. What if um, Monday's candle looks like this? Still Monday. It's just don't look at the other one. Okay. Then I would look for, you know, the up. Oops. That was supposed to be an arrow, but that's where this head and shoulders comes in. 
Okay. So let me draw it over here using a different tool, right? So um, if we get sort of a candle like this, I would probably actually still buy it. If we get a candle like this, what is this? A hundred percent retracement, which means to me the to look to sell the lower high. So that's what would the Tuesday morning would be sell the fifty percent retracement from here. Okay. So it's a fine line. If we get a 50% retracement of this green candle, I'll buy it. If we get a 80% retracement of that candle, I'll sell it. And it's probably the same price that I'd buy or sell. But the million dollar question isn't the price, is it? <clears throat> the million dollar question is whether I'm going to buy or sell. So let's just say this is it. I'm going to I'm going to buy there or sell there whatever there is, okay, this level right here. Right? Any questions before I move on? Maybe, I, you know, I just don't want to blow through these. I want to make sure we're, we're having a, a discussion. That's it? Okay. You sure? Good. Cable, cable, cable. All right. We'll do that for Jenny. Said I gotta do something about where I'm going all right so still got a lot of stuff going on here you know i probably have to clean up my charts after a while but i like to have the historical context lots going on here right you can see um i was following this channel do you think it's statistically important that that channel has been broken? That we're kind of in this channel now? Okay, that's, I know it's hard to see, that's why I'm kind of like illustrating. Okay. So, what does it mean? Well, it means uh, of this bounce a clear support which we had marked ahead of time okay retracement into the the old resistance now support rally changes us technically from a bear to a bull funny thing is this bottom occurred on the day the IMF report came out which we had talked about probably probably somewhere in here. Oh, I know when we started talking about it, the break of 150. That's right, break 150. So, all right, so that's good. Uh, you see this red zone? Okay, and then inside that red zone, there's another zone. Um, that was where I was hoping it would go up. And it failed to go up, and I wondered why, because technically that was an important level, technically. Then I realized the market was waiting for the IMF report. That's right. So that it's been 150 the whole time. Okay, here's the 150 area. Um, and it, we had that as a buy zone back in February. Okay? And you can see it did buy, right, and then failed. So I asked myself, why? Okay. And to me, I said, you know what? It's probably the IMF report. And then I had someone go to the IMF website, pull out the date, April 13th. So we said, well, then 
perhaps on the, in the middle of April, there'll be an opportunity if the pound was going to reverse and head back up, which I was hoping, which the whole time, by the way, if you think this is all hocus pocus, this whole time here, the guy in charge of the Central Bank of the United Kingdom, the Bank of England, Harney, conservative, successful, because he was a conservative, central banker. Now, why would they hire a Canadian to run the Bank of England? Because Canada was never really in the global financial crisis in regards to, like, uh, banks being over leveraged and and all these different things, because in great part to Carney and at and at when Carney was in charge of the Bank of Canada, the uh, Canada also had a really good uh, finance minister, and they worked as you know brothers in arms almost. Um, and so they were Canada was in very very good financial shape when you looked at the books, so to speak, right? And Canada never really suffered. I mean, they suffered because everyone else suffered, but they didn't suffer because of their own, let's dare I say, ignorance. Canada was in good financial shape. So the Bank of England hires Carney because he's conservative, but he also gets stuff done. So he takes over the Bank of England. He's wor he starts working there, gets a couple years under his belt, right? And then... During this period um, that I have outlined in dark black, you know, for this month or so, Carney, through, you know, the various press conferences and stuff, told us directly, he said, I understand the economic data is poor. And, and the, the inflation numbers like CPI are tanking, tanking. But he said... It's the crash in oil that's dragging most of our numbers down. But if you look more closely to the data than just headline CPI numbers, and if you have sort of a longer-term outlook than just what happened over the last month or two in oil prices, right, if you actually look at the long-term trend of what's been happening and what is likely to continue happening, that there is positiveness in those numbers and that there is wage inflation, which is huge. That's a hard thing to create, wage inflation. And therefore, don't worry about the numbers right now. Because the reality is different from what the numbers, what the data points are suggesting if you don't dig deep enough and, and actually do your homework. Well, we know the vast majority of the world doesn't do their homework, so they're just like, CPI, 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 right? Um, and, all they, and all they're looking at is past data, which might be a singularity, right? Um, so anyways, so Carney is saying, Buy the British pound, buy the British pound, buy the British pound. Not in so many words, but that's what it means to us as currency traders and as speculators. So the missing part was, well, when will Carney be con when will Carney's data be confirmed? Well, if the IMF comes out and says, we've had 200 PhDs study the UK economy from every which way possible, and we feel like the outlook is half decent, certainly not bad for the UK, then Carney is vindified, vindicated, uh, confirmed, and British pound goes strong. That was our guess, using technical and fundamental analysis and actually listening to the people that are in charge of the valuation of the currency. I mean, I don't know what more you want, right? So anyways... Um, and so to the day, the British pound versus the dollar and the British pound versus the yen have technically reversed now and become bullish. So when I give you a heads up like eight weeks in advance, is that enough time? And when I take the time and effort to explain why, I, that's the part I like. Whether you know it works out or not, I don't know. But the logic, it makes sense. I mean, the logic can be explained, right? So I actually asked 
people to volunteer to go to the IMF website, and I said, search through it. I'm not going to give you a link to the report, but you should get find the link, read the report, and 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 spend some hours on the IMF website and just look at what they do. If you're not familiar, read their charter, right? Read some meeting minutes. Uh, read some of the reports. Read the la- the last you know World Economic Report. Just I mean, if you're a, a a professional foreign currency speculator, this is something that you should enjoy doing. Yeah, it's 200 pages, but skip through it. Blah, 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 blah. Go read the charts. Just go to the, look, just re- look at the pictures. Well, okay, and so then um, you, you actually read the report. Thank you, Pat on Fire. Okay, but sometimes you also need to read through it, right? And this is what I was saying as far as market sentiment is concerned. Not bad news is good news. Now, in some time, in some places, you know, past performance does not predict future results, right? So you really got to kind of know what's going on because – you can interpret things wrong. Like a lot of people say, the news came out good, but yet the result was bad. Why? Well, you know, you have to, you have to really actually understand what's going on outside of these little data points. So very often, good news means the central bank's not going to put free free money in the market, so the market crashes because the market would actually have, like to have moderately bad news, so they continue to get free money. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> right. Yeah, you won't ex- succeed being lazy, right? So uh, I did a video, I think on Wednesday, might have been Tuesday, about work ethic. Right? Do you guys remember the description? Required to be a successful Forex trader, in my humble opinion? Ridiculous, sickening work ethic. Ridiculous, sickening work ethic. If you don't have that, go home. You're just breathing my air. Actually, no, uh, I, years ago, and I, I don't remember who, otherwise I would cite it, but I read somewhere, um, somebody asked something about, you know, to a professional trader about retail, Forex, you know, growing, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And he, and, he, and they asked um, what they thought of retail Forex trading. And he said, oh, they're... Retail Forex traders are liquidity events for professionals. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, if you don't want to be, you know, a, if you don't want to be someone else's liquidity event, then why don't you just be the smart money? And if you're not sure what it takes or what to do, and you're just like, Wayne, tell me this stuff. If I, if I would have known, I would have spent days on the IMF website. Right? You should print out the IMF report and put it in your bathroom. And instead of playing Angry Birds on your phone for two hours in the bathroom, you could read the IMF report. I mean, are you that crazy? Why not? What's the big deal? Oh, well, I'm not going to go to that level of dedication, but I'd like to be a millionaire. I'd like Forex to make me a millionaire, but uh, go to the IMF website and download a report, read it. Know it, understand it, explain it to your friends at the barbecue. Oh, I'm not willing to go that far. But could I have my million dollars, Wayne? <laughs> no. All right, so anyways. Um, so where are we on the British pound? Sorry, Jen. Okay. So very easily, a breakout, pullback, 3A2. I know there's a lot going on here, but this helps me based on you know, we used to have a wedge here, and then the wedge broke, okay? But anyway, so we're back above the wedge, and that's in the back above this channel. And so uh, uh, there's a lot going on here. But the only thing I'm looking at really right now, the other stuff just reminds me of past um, opinion. What I'm looking at here is once you have a higher high defined by higher than this high, okay? I go into automatic mode. 
I go from a bear to a bull, and I automatically fib. I'm not joking. You know, it's like in the military, you know, where you get the call to, you know, man your stations, and you wake up and you jump out of your um, hammock, right? I don't know if uh, sailors sleep on hammocks or not, but they, you hop out of your hammock and, and you got to run to your station. Run, run, run. It's the middle of the night, 2.30 in the morning. And you run, 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 and you can do it. And, and you're, they do this day and night, day and night for months and months and years and years, right? It's just constant. And you can run down that hall, even though the walls and the doors and stuff are made out of steel, you could run down that hall with your eyes closed and not hit your head on anything, right? Because you're so good, the routine has been drilled into you so well, right, through regimen, that you can do it almost automatically. That's what I'm like with the, when patterns like this. So as soon as this happens, I'm already looking it's and my favorites are the three eight two and the six one eight, and I'm good to go. Like boom, I'm 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 ready, man. I'm just ready, okay. And that that's just especially 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 if it all started on my support area, in which I figured price was going to reverse anyways. Now I got a technical reversal based on this higher high. Now the fir- you know the, the lower the the bounce at support is now confirmed reversal. So my buy zone, and honestly, if you were trading with me eight and a half years ago, I was exactly the same. Do you ever run into like, do you ever get emails that say, hey, I got this new trading strategy. You should buy it for me. You should take my training course. I have this new indicator, right? I have this new indicator that, I mean, new? Why the heck would you want a new trading strategy or a new trading indicator? <laughs> like right off the bat, I'm like, are you stupid or something? I'm like, really? Why would you want something new? Like, <laughs> Right? Like it just says, completely untested and unreliable. Buy it for me today. Like, w- why would you need something <laughs> new? Silly. Right? So anyways, um, yeah, so that's how I treat that. Uh, I'm a bull. Now, remember, it all started here, and this is all started uh, on the IMF. So, like, there's 958 reasons why this was an area of hoping, hoping – potentially maybe could possibly reverse. Now that's a you know, it's an educated guess, but guess is a guess is a guess, right? It's just a smart guess versus a dumb guess. Okay, pretty good smart guess. But when do you fire for effect? When do you know you're certain? Well when you get the higher high at support based on fundamentals and technicals converging. So this is the fire for effect. So the three A two now simply predicts a one six one eight. And I know I got a lot going on here. Um, we got to be careful because it looks like they're reverse fibs for something else too. So I got to be a little careful. But um, basically, this area is the target. Okay, it should be the higher one, but I just noticed I have a six one eight here for some reason of a of a drop. So again, if you're anticipating the other side of the trade, um, if that's truly still a six one eight for a bear, bears will sell there. So it might be one of these 3A2 to 13A2. Normally it's 1618, but you know what? This is probably a place where your risk increases. Maybe take some of your profit. Maybe take all of your profit. Whatever. Just be ready. But the actual target's here. Okay? Make sense? Good. Am I too candid? Am I too in your face? Is it good? Like everybody's everybody's happy? Hmm. 
Everybody see yeah, good. Right on. Um uh so that was for Jenny, right? Oh. But what then, sir, do you think of the Oh, okay, okay, good, good. Nice question. First of all, I'm a bull, so that's very difficult for me to answer, but I, I will do my best to give you a guess. And and that's why I have these other zones. Okay, so, th so now that I back out, the macro move, Jen, is from here. So the sell zone for bears is the 3A2, 50%, 618, and... And way up there is a 786, okay? So let me change the colors to red. So we're, we're through, through the 3A2, but it was an area of concern. We're through the 50%, but it was an area of concern. So where are the next levels of resistance? Well, this is now the 618 Fibonacci retracement. It's very close to the 3A2 projection of the, of the up move, which we've just had. So that's going to be um, confluence. But watch this. Whoa. Does that look like old support way to the left? Should I care about that? What do you think, Jen? Because I'm bearish. Because I'm bearish. Jen, Jen. Okay, good. And then the, the actual target from this move is here. 618. Okay, that's where those bulls that bought down there would start to take profit. But it's also the 786 of the bigger move. And you convert, you combine those to confluence and oh, snap. That's a problem area too. So it's, this is where this bull would take profit based on the 3A2 that predicts a 1618. It's also the Alamo now, the last chance for bears. Because if you don't sell at that 786, then this sucker is reversing and we're going to make a higher high than that. Okay? So you have to sell. If you don't sell there, you're not a bear. Um, what, but bears don't want it to go to 786, do they? Because that makes you vulnerable to double bottoms and stuff. So a, a, a bear really wants to sell here aggressively. So, again, I'm not a bear, but if I was a bear, that's where I would sell. And, and the way I trade is you have to assume where the bears are going to trade. Because if you're a bear, you're, you're going to sell there. I mean, just what more do you want? Okay? So that is a sell for bears because they're, they're looking at the market this way. Could I get any more colors on this? Are you guys still following it or is this – I got so many drawings on here, it's so confusing. You're, everything's okay? Yeah. It's, it shows you how smart our, the human mind is, right? shows you how smart the human mind is. This is the actual plan that we're talking about right now for Jen Jen. I don't think Jen likes me saying Jenny from the block, so i got to come up with a new one. Jen Jen sounds like a panda, though. Okay, so that's what we're looking for, Jenny. Right. I like you, Jenny. I like the way you trade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that that that's that's what's going on there for a bear, okay? Uh, and it can go a little higher. It's just um, less desirable, okay? Because if it if if it's the higher one, then I think what'll happen is at best we'll make it back down to the red zone and it'll bounce. See this big wave that I have here, I'm suggesting it makes a lower low. Okay. If it's the higher one, 
I suggest at best, if we're lucky, we get down to support, but then it, it'll rise. Okay, so that's the difference. So I would sell here with no fear. I would sell here with, you know, concerns. You know, the difference in pips is minor, but it's everything different strategically. All right, my friends, what else? You're the boss. I'm just a humble currency trader. Let me know how it can help. Do we have do we have news? Is it durable goods? No, dur durable goods is later, right? Does anyone do we have eight? Th is it is it durable goods? Oh, it'd be silly not to cover that. At least catch the number. Cause I'm happy. Eh, 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 eh. Hang on, and then uh, and then yeah, we'll do some kitty cat. Let me just get the news fired up. I use tradethenews.com, and I have, you know, I don't know, eight years. I guess. It was great. In fact, it, it was the same conference that I first met FX Street with. Uh, FX Street, I think, went to their first conference in America, New York, and I think it might have been the FXCM Traders Expo, which makes it 2000 and... Was it 2005, maybe 2006? Oh, my gosh. That's almost 10 years. Good and FX Street was there, and um, Trade the News had a booth, too. Capital goods orders expected 0.3%, and capital goods shipments expected 0.3%. So anyways, trade the news. We'll get the numbers um, faster than anybody in the whole wide world. Good state in just a few seconds. What is Bloomberg? Two thousand dollars a month. Orders four point zero percent better than the zero point six percent expected. X transport at minus zero point two percent is five tenths lower than expected. With back month buys down to minus one point three percent from minus zero point four percent. Capital goods orders at minus zero point five percent is eight tenths lower than expected. With back month buys lower. And capital goods shipments at minus zero point four percent is seven tenths below expectation. With back month buys down one tenth to zero point one percent. And headline durable goods orders better than expected, but X transport below expectations, capital goods orders and capital goods shipments below expectations. You know what? A, a funny story just entered my mind uh, from that same conference. And I'm, I, can, I even remember where we were standing, right in between the FX Street and the Trade the News uh, booths. Um, I ran into a guy, and, uh, and uh, I don't even. Oh, I'm trying to think how long ago this was. But anyways, I uh, ran into a guy, and we started talking, all that kind of stuff about trading. And he said, you know, I just spent like $5,000 on Forex Made Easy. And I said, oh, my God. You just spent $5,000 on a MACD indicator? And so we, 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 I spent maybe an hour and a half just talking with him, showing him some things and just talking. And... Uh, I, we got on a payphone. This is how old this is. We get on a payphone, and he called them and canceled his order and got a refund. <laughs> what 
One, two, yeah. Saving 4X souls. Yeah. High five. Yeah, it's true. True story. I just can't remember which conference that was. It might have been even older than that. But anyways, awesome. Just, yeah. Job well done. You guys remember that? Any, anyone that old? Forex made easy? Here's what they were selling. Um, you're, it was sort of like a chart that looked like that. It, it was a MACD indicator, as far as I know. Maybe a slight different version. And they're just like, yeah, when this crosses, sell it. See how easy it is to make money? You'll just be, you'll make a million dollars. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I like the way you trade. Mm -hmm. So anyways, um, so durable goods, uh, less than expected. Um, let's see, uh, X transportation, ooh, way low if you take out the, uh, the airplanes. Wow. So not good, not a good number at all. Um, I look at durable goods, and I've explained this in the past, so I won't go into great detail, but I look at durable goods really as um, new homeowners and, uh, and, and such going out and buying stainless steel appliances at Home Depot. So if you've got a functioning credit market, then uh, people with reasonable credit can get money, buy houses, and then, you know, fix up the kitchen, fix up the bathroom, uh, repair the roof, um, change out the electrical, you know, put in new pipes, uh, hire some landscapers, and suddenly, you know, um, through the magic of money, increase the asset value of the of the asset that they had purchased, spread money throughout the economy, and improve the entire neighborhood, um, all because of money. Okay. Sure, money doesn't buy you happiness. Being poor sucks. Okay? Doesn't bring you happiness, but I sleep well in my tempur bed. It feels good. Does it make me happy? No, but it feels good. What's the joke, right? It feels good on the whole. Um, anyways. Um, so what else would you like me to do? Oh, it was Kitty Cad, right? Yeah, we got one for the CAD. Um, let's start with, because I think I got it on this this uh, chart here. Because uh, I'm happy. All right. Um, this is what we've been planning for a very long time now, uh, I guess from the end of last week, okay? We had a break above... Uh, out of this zone, which goes back months, okay? So we've been watching this for months. And in fact, let me just back out one more time just to make the point. I mean, look how, look how easy that is to spot, okay? Clearly in a range. So we were buyers here, sellers here, buyers here, sellers there, fine. And it worked out very nice for a very, very long time, okay? Then something happened recently, right? Lower high, Lower low, but more importantly, breakout. WWWD. What would Wayne do? I just, do you remember the whole regiment thing? Fire for effect? In this case, it's not a higher high, it's a lower low. What do I do? You got to jump out of your, your hammock, right? Get to your battle stations. Sell the retracement. Okay. Um, what old support becomes resistance. I'm also looking at the distance between the 382 and 618 Fibonacci retracement. And if you don't believe me, um, for those, maybe someone here can confirm. But when we were down here, I drew this first line here, the up line. We drew... Um, after this candle here, that's it. Because now it confirmed that's that's the bottom of the breakout, and then we planned it for it to come up to the 3A2 roll reversal area, and that it would be a sell to the to the new lower low. And these are four hour hour candles, guys. So we've been now watching this for like 
a week and a day kind of thing. Very logically, very soundly, methodically planned out using technical analysis. Right? And this even this little line was the the second confirmation of the breakout because now it confirms the 3A2, okay? Then it makes another lower high, lower low. Now imagine that on a 15-minute chart, right? That certainly would have put you short here. And, and notice that the size of the candle once it broke. I swear to you, okay? I swear. I swear to you, though, um, we drew this orange line like when we were here okay so like a day and a half early and notice when it finally broke that line the size of the candle do you think that's a coincidence possibly but does anyone th think that it could also possibly be that many 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 professional market participants were watching that orange line too is that just as possible potentially even more likely. Now, I asked this question. It's rhetorical, all right? But I'm also trying to reprogram your brain. Because if you actually say yes, mentally, you think yes, that's one thing. If you manifest it by actually reaching to your, type, to your keyboard, now you're making yourself vulnerable because now you might look stupid if you give the wrong answer. And you were trained as a child to not take risk. Because if you had to stand in front of the class and you got the answer wrong, everyone's going to laugh at you and now you're a social moron because of your teacher that made you know, $18,000 a year. She ruined you. Now nah, she was loving and caring, but now you, most people are not willing to take risks, mostly because they don't want to be laughed at. Okay. So now you have to say, I need to overcome this fear. I'm going to actually you know, answer Wayne's question. I'm going to type it, and I'm going to put my answer publicly. And might, I might be ridiculed, but I might not be ridiculed. So now you have to overcome that emotion, and then you have to say to yourself, I, uh, to spell the word yes, I have to type in Y-E-S. So now you're using a part of your language, part of your brain. But then you have to type it. So now it's a tactile motor skill thing, and you have to remember how to type Y-E-S. And so you're using, like, all these different parts of your brain to answer a very basic question, something that almost answers itself. But if you just sit there and do nothing and sit there, uh-huh, Wayne's right, uh-huh, Wayne's right, uh-huh, Wayne's right, then you go start trading on Monday and you don't know what you're doing. You're like, man, I don't know what I'm doing. It's so easy when Wayne does it. Okay, you need to move forward and manifest your destiny. Okay, so if you think that that was not by chance, you need to make that decision, move forward and type yes. Not for me, not for the other guy in the room, just for you. Be selfish and train yourself. It's neuro-linguistic programming. Train yourself, rewire your brain and research has shown that your brain will actually physically change. The, the synapses will realign themselves so that you stop thinking the old way, the way that your teacher taught you, and, and more like me, your mentor, has taught you. Okay? So if you think, okay, so you say yes, and therefore this moves it down to the next level. Okay? Now... Um, again, we had this plan, I don't know, Friday of last week, maybe Monday. Okay. Should be, should be easy. Okay. What's the next level? Well, okay. 3A2 predicts what? Remember, I, I don't have many opinions. I'm opinionated and I'll give you my opinion, but the vast majority of it is technical analysis. So like, I don't know where it's going to go. Right. You say to me, Wayne, where's it going to go? I have no idea. But I'll tell you what Fibonacci theory suggests. I'll tell you what the technical analysis is. Okay, so I might not be Mozart. Maybe I'm Mozart fundamentally, but technically I'm not Mozart. I, I, I can't write the beautiful music, but I'm a concert pianist. You put the music in front of me, 
I can play it, and I'll play it beautifully. But write it? That's Mozart. That's Beethoven. That, you know, they're geniuses. I, I just play the notes that they write, okay? The technical analysis says that, okay? Now, the fundamentals I really enjoy, and the fundamentals um, I think are uniquely mine. So I don't know if, if that's probably extremely arrogant, but I'd like to think I'm Mozart of the fundamentals. At least I enjoy them. Okay? So that suggests uh, 120. All right. Any we got we got two and a half minutes. Give me one more. I want to give you a hundred percent. I don't want to quit three minutes early. Kiwi done. Uh, someone's uh, Morgan Adams says fundamentally it may be up later. Follow commodity prices. Follow oil. Follow the CRB. If they fall again, yeah, dump the Canadian dollar. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. All right, so Kiwi dollar. Okay. Boop. Boop. Okay. So. Oh, that's pointed down, too. Hang on. Let me back out even farther. I haven't looked at this particular chart in a while. Yeah. Hang on. Hang on now. Yeah. All right. Well, this is going to be one where you need to make a decision um, on your own as far as whether you're a bull or a bear. Um, this fib down, where is that coming from? That's not going to give it to me. Great. All right. I see what's going on. All right. Yeah, this is a tricky one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't, I haven't been trading Kiwi as of late. Um, all right. And I, and I can see even why, but, um, all right. So this is a okay, cake. Thank you for bringing this one up. This one is a challenge, which might mean you don't want to trade it at all, okay? But if you're a bear, a macro bear now, based on, you know, basically daily charts, um, you know, you've had a 786, and it's holding currently. And a 786 predicts, at most, a double bottom. which could be a suggestion of collapsing of either global macroeconomics over the summer or uh, a collapse in commodity prices again over the summer. Okay, because this started January to April. So let's just call it all of February. So all of February, all of March, all of April, three months, right? So that means all of May, all of June, all of July. So maybe a slow, you know, it could drop all the way to the 1st of August, right? So um, that's that. That's on the macro level. On the micro level, you say you are not worried about global macroeconomics. Um, in fact, uh, you're positive. So you're going to be trading this now, okay, which would break the 786 above us and put us up to the next zone which would be this and we would consolidate here for a while okay eventually coming down right that would be the consolidation part and then a break to the upside okay and again that would be again maybe the first of august Okay. Does that make, is that clear? I mean, I don't know where it's going to go, but those are the two likely scenarios that I see on this one. And I'm trying to give you swing trades, right? Because we only meet once a week. Um, so I want to give you some meat on the bone, right? So I like to make fairly large, because a lot of traders, a lot of gurus don't do that, do they? 
right? They they tell you what happened yesterday, and then that's that. I, I try to give you what's going to happen in the next three minutes. Sometimes it's going to be what's happened in the next three hours. Sometimes this week. Sometimes it's over the next three months. Try to mix it up a little bit. But it should all be there, I think. Do you know, uh, when I was invited to the very, very first FX Street conference in um, Catalonia, it wasn't Spain, we were in Catalonia, um, the very end we had a panel, uh, and we, there was lots and lots of great traders there, lots and just fabulous traders, right? Uh, professionals. But no one would give, um, no one gave very, very clear um, trade ideas in the Q&A. We were asked probably two or three times. And so I leaned forward and I said, all right, let me tell you exactly what I think. The British pound is going to fall potentially 5,000 pips. I might have been conservative. I might have said 2,000 pips. And I said, I'll tell you exactly when. Watch the market 90 days from now. Let me tell you why. Nine, it just recently, we, and again, you have to put, this is 2007 now, right? Um, I said, just recently, if you look at the data, the largest purchase of, of 90-day T-bills was made. The largest purchase of T-bills, 90-day T-bills, in the history of the world. This was obviously the beginning of the financial crash, right? Before it was even talked about, this was the beginning. And I said, clearly, professional investors have taken their money out of the market, and it's, it's dropping. And they're taking a 90-minute breather, or, or sorry, a 90-day breather. And in 90 days, they're going to have to make a choice. One, buy back into the market, like the stock market. So let's say the market drops 20% over those 90 days. They decide, you know what, now is a buying opportunity, right? So they get out of the 90-day T-bills, and what do they do with it? They buy the stock or whatever they want to do. And that, that, that makes, like, the stock market goes up, and that means you short the yen, and, and, and you buy the British pound, in that scenario, right? But I said, but in 90 days when, they, and when these bills will expire, and they will expire – the investors will have to make a decision, right? What happens if they decide to buy the bonds again? Stock market continues to crash. Japanese yen gets unbelievably strong. Sell the pound yen. It's worth 2,000 more pips on, starting on that day. And guess what? It's exactly what happened, baby. But not that I was right, but that I was able to explain it in layman's term to a group of people. So anyways, I got to jump, babe. Thank you for FX Street. As you can tell, I've been working with them a long time, and I love everybody there. Thank you for your uh, investment of time and, and such. Appreciate your loyalty. Um, that's it. I don't have anything to sell you, so uh, just have a fabulous weekend, and maybe I'll see you at tradersway.com. I do this every day. Um, if not, I'll see you at FX Street every Friday at 730 in the morning. Take care of yourself, you hear?